You got the stuff? Depends on who's asking. Whoa! What was that? It's the bat! Shoot him! Welcome back to the seedy alleyway where we host Gotham Goons. Tonight's episode is about the cinematic universe by DC Comics and Warner Brothers, the DCEU. We will rave and rate films that have already come out, talk about upcoming and announced films, and talk about what we'd like to see for the future of the DCEU. Get your trilby, fedora, or driver's cap, buckle up, and as always, watch out for the bat! Hello and welcome. This is Gotham Goons. This is our first episode where we want to talk about the DCEU, the DC Universe, which is the competition of the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, that did really well and was super successful. And unfortunately, uh, contrary to how me and my brother feel, uh, DC doesn't get as much of a praise as it probably should. It's actually, in my opinion, doing really well. And so we wanted to talk about that and talk about where it's doing good and where it's doing bad. And... uh, So I'm here with my co-host, my brother, Jaron Daniels. Hello. And I'm Roman Daniels. And uh, sit tight and listen up, and uh, here we go. So... Hey, and don't interrupt us. (laughs) (laughs) So what did you like about the DCEU? Like, what what has it done right so far, in your opinion? Well, everybody brings up the TV shows. That's the first thing, you know. But for me, I think the big thing is straight Man of Steel. That right there just changed the whole game. And it just, you know, for me, I'm, I've never been as big of a Superman fan until Man of Steel came out. Even It's the I mean, best Superman movie. In my opinion, it's the best one that's ever come out, probably. I, what, do you think? They have the perfect or do you cast. Think... That's the thing. The perfect cast, the perfect storyline. Like, it was just so well done and with so much heart. And it just brought in what really needed to be brought in, you know, right at the right time. Well, it's weird because it it came out in 2013, and, like, the only thing that it had to go off of, like, before that was obviously the Christopher Reeve stuff and, like, the, you know, the Dean Cain TV show and all that kind of stuff. Lois and Clark. But, the no, but even just DC in general and Warner Brothers and stuff, like, all they really had was, obviously, the really successful Christopher Nolan Batman movies, and, you know, me and my brother Phil like, sort of similar in the those movies. Like, we like them a lot. Like, they're fun movies to watch and stuff, but they're not, like the epitome or like the essential Batman you know universe they're just kind of like they're almost like really good crime drama movies in my opinion rather than like straight up superhero flicks which kind of like strap Batman onto the name and just change everything and and (laughs) kill off every villain (laughs) I mean it was cool though I mean amazing you know of course the storyline was fun to watch and and yeah, and Cillian Murphy and all those different people in that movie were. Yeah, just well, I'm watching Peaky Blinders finally. That's a good show. Anybody want to watch Amazing that? A good show. show. Uh, they should probably get on Netflix right now because it's it's all on Netflix right now, and I'm like binge watching it. And my brother here, he's like, "Hey, you gotta watch Peaky Blinders." All four seasons under my belt, and it's amazing. Seriously, so good. Go watch Cillian's it. a great actor. Last when I was watching that, I was like, he's so different than what like I remember him from, and like just different than Scarecrow, like completely. So I think he's got so much capability. But yeah, back to Superman. So um. Uh, one thing that I was going to say is, like, it's... The only thing it had going before it was the Batman Begins and, like, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises and stuff. And it kind of took a risk by going a little bit darker with Superman, which is one reason people didn't like it, sort of. And so oh, yeah, ways. all the stuff you see online, it's, like, the dark, blackish suit almost. And it's, like, what people wish Man of Steel looked like, what it actually looks like. It's, like... There's so many complainers, though. It's so annoying. It's, like, it's like okay, you either want it to be bright and colorful or you or you and goofy or you want it to be like dark you know there's like there's two different sides pretty much you can much, be campy like Lois and Clark and that was yeah, alright why can't it be like in what? between you know and that's what I feel like Man of Steel had going for it wasn't just dark it wasn't just like it was, one really cool thing with it is that it honored the characters like to a T in my opinion like uh, you know it was it was the in my opinion Henry Cavill is the definitive Superman and he really showed it in that movie I think almost over all the movies so far I think Justice League he's he's kind of coming into his own Superman, like, he's becoming this, like, you know, he, he's almost like, what's that, the term they talk about when you're talking about acting, it's, uh, it's, um, like, endurance, so he's got really good endurance, because he's starting to show that he's grown as the character, like, and I can really see that in him when he's in Yeah, and acting, they, like, what, they film different parts at different parts of the movie, um, at different times, 
And like Roman said, you know, it's like that progression is just showing in real life, which is crazy, you know, based on the different movies he's been in. It's like, yeah, young Superman, which is Man of Steel, figuring his life out. And then newer Superman, which is, you know, Batman vs. Superman, Justice League. Like, he looks more like a hero now, even than he ever has. You yeah. Know? And just, they're doing awesome with it. You know, you know what's crazy, too? Did you know that um, Henry Cavill, had a, he, he tried out to be Superman for Superman Returns, and he was, like, beat out by Brandon Routh. Which is crazy. So he had what already heck? wanted to be Superman multiple times and tried out multiple times and lost out to Brandon Rouse, believe it like, or not. They, which yeah, is good, they, though. It actually turned yeah. out perfect. Like, I think that happened for a reason. Ew, he'd be horrible <clears> against, <throat> you know, versus Kevin Spacey. That movie was... <laughs> okay. Don't it's... get me started on the earth. <laughs> that would be so scary to go through right now. Because I, will, okay, I so... will go off on that movie. <laughs> <clears throat> so we might get a little fun here because we're drinking squatters, craft beers. We're drinking... Uh, American wheat half Hawaiian. Squatters so is a really Utah good. brand, from what I from what I know. Yep, and we finna be Utah, so yeah, it's good. It's it's it's, it's, good. A, it's like a, if you like half Hawaiian, it's it's a little bit like a, a darker, more brown half Hawaiian, if that makes any sense. But anyway, so uh, with Man of Steel, what did you not like in the movie? And I think I already know what you're gonna say here. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you not like? What, like whether it's a character or a story arc or, or what did I say about? Don't get me started on this. <laughs> Don't get me started no. on it. Okay, you ready for this? Two words, Jonathan Kent. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was good. No, he was great. Okay, right? we love him. Don't get me wrong, him as an actor. man. I love. He's changed my mindset on him as an actor so much just from that movie. He was the best, like patriarch sort of character. And isn't like, that funny? How Superman Henry Cavill has literally had both of his father figures in the movie have both played Robin, Robin Hood. I always yep. think that's really funny. So, so there's awesome. Kevin Costner. Okay, and Russell, Russell Crowe Crow. is amazing too, of course. Yeah. So Kevin Costner as Jonathan Kent. <laughs> the thing that made me laugh on Man of Steel. We used to sit there and make fun of it all the time when we watch it, but. Uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, so Superman's grown up, right, to become the hero he's supposed to be in a small town, you know, Smallville, you know, uh, bread and butter type, you know, Boy Scout that he's supposed to be, and his, you know, he learned those things from his parents, right? So in Man of Steel, it's so funny because there's that part where they're talking and they're sitting next to his truck and he's like, and he, of course, Super, you know, Clark is younger on this part, um, and he's like, hey, you know, you know, what do we talk about about this? We're not, you know, you shouldn't have done that. You know, it's just, you can't show your powers off. I don't, I'm paraphrasing here, right? But Superman's like, what was I supposed to do? Just let him die? And this is, of course, before he's Superman. <laughs> and freaking Jonathan Kent's words of wisdom was, maybe. Maybe. maybe what is that? Die. No. What kind have... of freaking crap is that? Yeah, it should be, it really, here's where Marvel, I guess here's where, like, Stan Lee was right. And obviously this isn't, didn't come from the comics. That was a Man of Steel movie thing rather than a comic thing. But, you know, obviously, when you have great power, you need to have great responsibility, and that's not letting people die. <laughs> you know? Maybe. What the heck? Luckily, dude? he didn't really listen to that. But he does have to kill people when it's necessary, which is one thing I actually liked about Man of Steel that a lot of people criticized was, you know, when, when he had to take Zod out. Zod was literally just on a mission to, like, and he already did so much damage. We see it in, in Batman vs. Superman, which, by the way, don't get me started on that, because that's, <laughs> Batman vs. Superman is, like, the epitome of the best DC Universe film so far to date, and it, I think it always so will be. So eloquent and artistic, for sure. Unless they bring Zack Snyder back, because he uh, <clears throat> he really knows how to like tie it all together, and it was amazing how he did that in the well, beginning well, scene, where you can see all this destruction and and what's you know in movies we we see movies and we see like action scenes and we don't realize what is the aftermath of it, and it was so cool to see in that movie. And it was one of the oh, only yeah. movies that did it. Do they connect where you can that see the aftermath so and see like how many people are really hurt by it? And we just don't think about that stuff. So I love that beginning <clears> scene <throat> in, B- in BBS so much because of that. And this is why I just always say praise Zack Snyder because he, you know, he thinks of these things. He pre-planned all this stuff, and now it comes out for what four movies in advance. It's like how does he plan that so yeah. far in advance to really connect them like he does? And he's over here on, and, you know, obviously he was. I don't know what happened between him and Warner Brothers and DC, but it's like he was fired or whatever. But he's on like Vero now, which is a social media site, which I don't even know anything about. I still haven't looked at Vero, but I think it's a place sort of like Instagram where you can post photos or Twitter type of thing. And he's over here like responding to fans all the time. I know that's so cool. And he recently responded to fans about Doomsday from BBS, and I know oh, it's like my a goodness. tangent, but he he recently responded and and he said, you know. One of the fans asked something about Doomsday, and, and all that Zack Snyder said was, you know, I'm paraphrasing too, but he said, what makes you think that was the real Doomsday? And he basically said that that version of what we thought was Doomsday and BVS wasn't actually Doomsday, and that Doomsday is still out there. Yeah, it's like that space. part where, you know, the alien's talking to, or the alien ship, um, robotic 
portion is talking to Lex, right? And he's in there, and it's like the abomination. I can't remember what they say. It says like something about abomination. The desolation of abomination or something like that will never happen again or happen once on Krypton. And so that's what that's what he was saying is like he was referencing Doomsday already happened once yeah, it is before. It's all pre-planned. That's what's crazy and, about And now we can do it again, but now look, it's the same mutiny that happened right before, you know, before. And mm-hmm. that's what that's what it was warning about. And Lex, of course, does what he does. But man, he is so smart with that stuff. So back to what Rome was saying with, you know, Zod and how he had to kill Zod. Here's the thing. Like, is there never Okay, if you wanna if you wanna get into a superhero and you know, show your kids a comic book movie, that's fine, right? Go watch Incredibles or something. But when it comes to like real life, it's like it's kind of a war, you know, and that's really what it was. Like you can't just there's gonna be casualties, right? And especially with Zod's mindset, there was nothing he could do. Like well, okay, yeah. let those and, three guys get killed that he was aiming his like eye rays at. Or just kill him off, you know, finish him off. He was he had that mindset from the beginning that I'm going to turn Earth into Krypton and make soldiers that are working for my bidding, right? So Superman and has he was to do very this. passionate about it. Like and he brought it up. You're what? so passionate, and it's almost yeah. political for him. Like he's a he's po- politically passionate. He's like a about political what communist wants, about what he wanted, which yeah. was another really cool way of approaching that character. So mm-hmm. that's another reason I love I loved that version of of Zod. It was Actually, like the so ultimate much, soldier, like yeah. for his communist cause. Like I'm going to do this. And by the way, for those of you don't, that don't know, and if you've seen uh, Man of Steel and then you've also seen uh, Batman vs. Superman, um, there's so many little parallels. And one of the really cool parallels that I think is so awesome that another reason we got to praise Zack Snyder is when you see, uh, obviously in Man of Steel, um, Jor-El, which is Superman's real dad, played by Russell Crowe, um, fights Zod uh, before the, the destruction of Krypton. And he literally gets stabbed through the chest by Zod's like blade. And at the end of Batman vs Superman, uh, when they fight Doomsday, which is actually a DNA creation of Zod, you know, as part of Zod, he stabs Superman Second through the chest round. in the same yeah. way. And it was really cool the way they did that. It was like a father son got ripped apart by the same DNA source uh, in the same way, you know. And that was really, I thought that was super, really cool. <clears throat> but yeah, so what else did you not like about Man of Steel, or what else did you really like about it? Like, uh, let's talk more about so. My my thing was just that the cast was so amazing. The storyline was so amazing. Like, even Zack Snyder is still thinking ahead because that, that um, African-American uh, soldier that's in that movie. I can't remember his name. The, the Obama, actual actor. The Obama talk. You know, right. That sounds like Obama. Right? That dude, he seriously still could pull off Martian Manhunter. And we don't know. He could be Martian Manhunter with the way he looks, you know, with the way he talks. He could be John Johns, you know? That's one the of those fan is, theories I really like, is yeah. that one. There's other weird fan theories out there for the like, DCU. Perfect disguise. You but know? that's a good one. Yeah. And he <laughs> and he fits the bill. Like he's big, he's he looks cool. He like he talks you know how him and Superman and Man of Steel, they kinda have that dynamic, like Superman's like, Don't worry, you can trust me. And they're, you know, talking at the in the in the jail cell, right? And the other gentleman, I can't remember his name on that show either, or the actor's name, but you know, he's talking about, you know, you understand we have to take these precautions because we don't know you, right? But if you look at the comics, like, Martian Manhunter and Superman always kind of have that dynamic, you know, the uh, Mars versus Krypton mindset, you know? Yeah, and and so, even in BBS when he's like, hey, he's talking to Lois in the bathroom and she's trying to ask him questions about the military-grade um, bullets that were found in uh, in the in the desert or whatever, and he's like, you know... You got big balls, Miss Lane. He, yeah, he basically he basically <laughs> says don't don't try to bring back his halo about Superman. Yeah. So he's already he's always like not liking Superman. He's always and I really think that could be a possible reference that Zack Snyder was throwing out there that he is Martian Manhunter because they just don't mm-hmm. get along. It's just one of those weird things. It's like in a way it's sort of the Superman Batman dynamic, but it's different because I don't know. They're like they're they're powerful in in the same way in a lot of ways, and they they use their power slightly differently. And so for some reason they just don't jive that well. I think with Man together. of Steel too, they they hit the nail on the on the head with the uh, uh, what's his name uh, Fisher Lawrence Fisher Lawrence Fishburne Fishburne. He's the coolest. That guy coolest is the best Perry White. Perry White and they'll never the, beat that Perry White. Actually, they'll never beat most of the cast. Yeah. They'll never in the days Henry of these Cavill kind of race either. wars right now and stuff like. You gotta realize, like, man, that was the perfect change that needed to be made, and Perry White was just so it's, perfect. It's the like same that thing character as, as Samuel L. Jackson, like when they, you know, From, yeah. when they made him. Like, Ooh, I almost said Mace Windu. That would've been. Scary. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mace Windu is awesome. I love Mace Windu. He's but like, like seriously, <laughs> okay, Lawrence Fishburne was amazing as that character. Um, the uh, I, I am having trouble with names in real life. Uh, Christopher Maloney. Yeah. He played the best part. Seriously, that was one of my favorite parts in Man Well, it's of Steel. funny when they announced the movie. I remember like following it pretty closely. Cause, and for those of you who don't um, 
check superherohype.com. It's a really good website. It's 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 kind of like for this type of fandom, like geekdom and nerd nerd type stuff. Um, it talks about all the updates on films and stuff. And I remember when 